Hi everyone. In addition to posting the answer key for the exam two practice questions, I'm also going to be posting a series of short videos that covers, uh, each one will cover the answer to a couple of the questions. Um, and I'll walk you through the thought process of answering them so that if you're not able to come into my office this afternoon and you know get your questions answered, maybe this will help you. All right, so the first question is from chapter three material, and it's, it covers isoelectric point, that the big idea concept, and amino acid structures. And it asks us to draw the structure of glutamic acid when the pH is equal to the isoelectric point. Okay, so we have to know the structure of glutamic acid. We have to understand the concept of the isoelectric point, And, you know, pH is going to be involved in, in some way. So the first thing we would do is we would gather some data from our date reference sheet. And so here we have um, from the data sheet, this is the structure of glutamic acid. Remember the those on the reference sheet are at pH 7. Okay. And glutamic acid has uh, three ionizable groups in the free amino acid form. So it's got an alpha carboxyl, an alpha amino, and an R group. Okay. And so let's draw the four possible structures of, um, of this molecule. And then we will um, calculate the net charge on each and figure out um, which one is the structure when we're at the isoelectric point. So remember, our def definition of the isoelectric point is the pH at which the molecule has no net charge. All right, so I'm going to draw the fully protonated form of glutamic acid. So that would mean that my amino group is going to stay protonated and charged. And my two carboxyl groups that are on this molecule are going to be protonated as well. So they will have a hydrogen on this oxygen here. All right, so that's form number one, right? Form number two is going to be when one of my two carboxyl groups gets deprotonated. So let's look, so we have three pKa's, and so the structures that we're gonna be drawing, okay, will be, you know, going up the pH scale, okay? so pKa1, which is 2.2, is going gonna, is gonna to impact that first transition in the molecule. pKa for the R group, okay, is going to be the next one, okay, and then the pKa for the alpha amino, which I'll, I'll call N terminus, we'll call this one C terminus, Okay, is going to be the third one. So we're just arranging them again as you go up the pH scale. So two, four, and nine. All right, so the 2.2 goes with the alpha carboxyl group. So that's this group right here, because this is my alpha carbon, right? So that's the one that's going to be deprotonated. So everything else stays the same. Oops. And my side chain is going to have a carboxyl on it that is still protonated because I have not hit its pK yet, okay? So that's form number two. Now, as we increase the pH further and we get above pH four, then this carboxyl group is going to be um, deprotonated. And so that's when we get the form that we saw on the reference sheet. Okay, so I'm just going to redraw that. Okay, and then the last one is when our amino group gets deprotonated. So that turns it into a neutral group. All right, so these are our 
forms. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the net charge for all of these versions of the molecule. So let's start on the left. So we have two neutral groups, right? So we have zero charge, zero charge, and a positive charge. Okay, so this is my charge on here is plus one. Okay, now as I go to the next form, I have no charge on the, on the side chain, and then I have a minus one here and a plus one there. So a plus and a minus cancel each other out, and so there's my, where I have my net charge of zero, okay? So I've already at this point answered the question because the question was asking, you know, what's the structure, oops, sorry, what's the structure of glutamic acid when the pH is equal to the isoelectric point? So this is a, a different way of saying, what's the structure when, when the molecule is neutral? When the net charge equals zero. So it's just another way of asking that, right? All right, and so we've already found the form where the net charge is zero. So this right here is going to be your answer, okay? So the net charge is zero and we have our structure, right? So just for the sake of completeness, okay, let's calculate the charges on the other two forms of the molecule. So here we have plus and minus, those cancel each other out, so that's zero, but we have a negative ne another negative charge here, so it's minus one, okay? And then when we deprotonate the amine group, that becomes neutral, so we have a, my, uh, a neutral and then two minus charges, so that is gonna be a minus two. All right, so this right here is the answer to the question. That structure right there. All right. So our next question is, you know, what is the charge on the histidine side chain at pH 8? So once again, we need to go to our reference sheet and we need to uh, look up the structure of histidine of the histidine side chain, and we need the pKa. Okay, so if we look, here is histidine at pH seven. Okay, and so what's this going to look like at pH eight? Okay, so if we look, um, we we have three pKa values, right? So the one for the alpha carboxyl. That pKa is 1.8. The one for the alpha amino, that pKa is 9.2. And the one for the side chain, that pKa is 6.0. Okay? All right. So one thing to remember, okay, is so we, we have to figure out what the, the structure of this thing is going to look like at pH 8. So we have to compare the pH um, to, and the structure um, for each of the three groups, okay? So first, let's look at this group right here, the alpha carboxyl group, okay? pH of eight is much higher, okay? It's, it's many, many units higher than the pK. So that means our P, so that means this group is going to be deprotonated. And here it is shown in its deprotonated form, okay? All right, so moving on, so that one's okay. So let's just put a little check mark next to that. Okay, so that group is gonna look like that, okay? Now let's look at the alpha amino group, okay? So if we look at the alpha amino group, the pH of eight is um, more than one unit below. So this is, so the pH eight is 
greater than one unit below the PK. So the group remains protonated and charged. Okay, so let's let's uh, write the explanation over here. So the pH of eight is well. Let's put many units above many units above the pKa. So group is deprotonated. Okay. All right. So the last one is the side chain. Okay. So so the side chain is shown in its deprotonated state. Okay. Because the pK of six or, uh, is um, one unit below seven. Uh, which is the pH at which this is shown, okay? So, let's, so first of all, this is the deprotonated form of histidine. And, and the easy way to tell whether you're seeing the deprotonated or protonated form of histidine is that uh, the protonated form has a positive charge, okay? So I'm just going to draw the side chain if it, if it were protonated to remind you what it looks like, that it would be this nitrogen has a, a pr extra proton on it, and it would be positively charged, okay? So this is the protonated form of histamine. All right, so let's go back to figuring out whether um, that histidine side chain is going to be protonated or deprotonated, okay? So the pH of eight, which is what we're thinking of, is how does it compare to the pK? It is two units above the pK. So that means the group is gonna be deprotonated. Oops, deprotonated. There we go. All right, so what is all of this telling us? Okay, we've just looked and seen that each group is shown um, in the data sheet in the protonation state that it would be at pH 8 as well as at pH 7. So the good news for us is that this right here is what the molecule looks like. At pH eight. So now the only thing left to do is to figure out the net charge. Okay, so if we look, we have a neutral side chain and we have a positive amino group and a negative carboxyl group. So those add up to zero. So our answer for this one is B. The charge would be zero. Okay. All right, so that's the first two problems, and I will record other videos for subsequent problems.